to the council. As you can see, it's not the useful type of council that helps people, but the elected type of council who's involved in things like council tax and so on. But they're not. Yeah, my role, I work part-time for community barnet as a safeguarding children's advisor, so I sit on quite a few of the safeguarding work with different groups on procedures, policies and so on. And last few years, the word CRB has come up very, very often. Now, you'd be glad to know a fisherman, there is no such thing as CRB now, it's gone. It's replaced by another thing, the BBS, <laughs> disclosure of our own service. Uh, and for any of you that fill up forms, the old forms, that CRB at the top, will no longer be accepted after February the 28th. There were new forms. The new forms have exactly the same question in exactly the same order, but there's a DBS bit at the top rather than CRB. But apparently, because they're read by computer, the computer from the 1st of March will only accept forms that have the DBS letter at the top. So if you do have your own forms, you might need to get new ones. They are the same way. Now, this change came about for a few reasons. One is that the criminal, the checks, the CRB checks, got caught up with the idea they to do with red tape from bureaucracy. And so therefore the idea is it, and then they do, can take a lot of time and resources. And I know at one time I think I had either five or six CRBs for different bits of work I did. From the government, uh, to schools, to the safeguarding, used to visit children's homes and so on. So you, I needed a separate one for each employer. Because it actually came under employment law. So that if somebody didn't have a CRB and work with children or young or vulnerable or adult service, it was the employer that could be fine. Yeah. What they've done, first of all, the sensible part of it is to try and make them more affordable. Perhaps the easiest thing is to say, so I, I put up one of these forms, get a DBS, try and remember to call it DBS and not CRB after all the <laughs> to do the work I do, the safeguarding work. Then I want to do some voluntary work in a youth club. What used to happen is I would have to have filled up a set number of CRB forms because that youth club would have to prove all their staff with CRB. So that's why it's important. Now the theory is, I took, I'll, I'll explain, I don't know why I could use the word theory to me, is that I would have the DBS form, I would go to that youth club to volunteer. I would have to take the same document, something with a picture, a passport, driving license, proof of national choice. Because I can just pick up a form. As you know from the CRB form, they don't have a picture, but it could be anybody's form. So I need to prove that I'm the person on that form. They will then be able to track with the disclosure and barring service. Um, that, that they can give the details, passport number and so on and so on. And this, what will come back is, well that person should have a DBS and their, the unique number is whatever it is. So you can check with that person, <coughs> perform it onto that person. It will also have a thing that since they got that form six months ago, there's been nothing that's come to our notice, nothing recorded. So rather than to fill in a second form, the youth club can print off proof that is asked about me and got and almost got an updated form. So they won't be, you won't have to review it every three years, you can update it electronically. The idea this will save about two million applications a year through the system. It saves money, it's more efficient, it helps. As you know, many volunteers may get involved in many different things, may work in shop, may, may do this, may do that. So that is a sensible move. Originally they will go to be portable anyway, you can get like a smart card. That was the original plan to see I think many years ago. Now how does that affect you? Well A it might be easier. The second one said with this make them portable there will be a fee. Now I am not sure, I mean, but they haven't told what the fees are or who pays them. I would guess it would be that if I wanted to pay a fee, and I think for volunteers that they are still going to pay the administration cost. So say I pay the DBS service ten pounds and give them permission that they can give information to whoever asks for it, then that becomes formal. So I won't go I have to go through filling up a form. I won't have to renew it after three years. So there's a logic there. Alongside this, because they are trying to save money, and actually they've changed the user, who um, was capita, but they lost the contract. Um, so you can, it's who that they have. 
reduce the number of people who need it. Now, I'll give an example. What is that? There's certain places, like a school, where everybody will need it. If you employ staff or have volunteers that are regular or sold and help the children, I'll give the example of children, and I bet it's slightly different for uh, uh, adults. They would need to have a, a track, a, DB, a DBS track. Um, and that's, that's for good reasons. But if it's, say, a doctor's receptionist isn't considered that. Uh, needed one. The doctor will be, because obviously you're examining, you're going into people's home. But a lot of people were wrecked, the section is sits behind the desk, and although we'll see a lot of families and children during the day, it's not part of their work, it's not the direct contact, but it's got the information. So it's actually, but it's reducing the number of people who need it. The example they give worries me, because they give an example of if a caretaker doesn't live on the Not in the school, but if it's say at the youth club or um, for instance, can be in any building. If the caretaker isn't part of the youth club, they won't need a trek. But of course, the, re the reason this all came about, I don't know if you remember the two girls dressed as Holly in and stuff, and it was the fact that the, care the caretaker was seen as a safe person. They wouldn't have talked to strangers, they wouldn't have got anything to tell them. But Ian Huntley was seen as part of the school, and therefore a 27 year old was a safe environment. So it's, it's Ridiculous they use the caretaker as an example. So this all sounds fine at the moment. As individuals, people will need to, to, to do these tracks less often because they can be updated electronically when you move around. From a normal organisation point of view, once somebody's in the system, they won't need a new form every time. So that may save some resources from your point of view and some time. Two, two or three worries about, or two or three things where you think, that's fine, but. Now the buts are, and I know if it helps, for 14 years I uh, run a community centre, the old garden East Finchley, so I've had to do it from an employee's point of view, run the sport at that room. That's what you do. Whether that's a good or bad recognition, no, I won't know. <laughs> so I have run after schools and youth clubs, and before that, actually, so I worked for Islington Council uh, in day centres centre in them and so on. So I know it from an employee's point of view, from the time it takes up, from the fact that you want to employ somebody the next day because somebody's left, but you, we had to wait. And that's hard, they could take months, and that often put people off. So there are some good things in the new system. We were aided by grants. We, we had income, we tried for things, but we got grants from the London Borough Barnet. Some of you might remember the days when London Borough Barney used to get grants a long, long, a long time ago in some distant part. But things from the lottery, things from local charities, things from the charities, you'd apply for a lot of it. A lot of them, I think, are going to say that if you work with children, young people, vulnerable adults, as part of the, fun, uh, <coughs> the funding condition, they can ask that you have all staff checked. Whether, whether they've got the guidance, whether you need to check one up by the guidance. Because funders don't want to be associated with something that can go wrong. Also, if you're involved in a building, I know as part of our community centre insurance, because we work with children and young people, the insurance, if you're not insured, unless all the staff that work for you want to work for you are CRB at the time. So, although you get these guidance that should mean a lot fewer people need to be trained. And if they've been checked once, they don't need to be checked every day. You need to check, but they don't need to, you don't need to go through the form for an sending off it and all that. There may be things both in, from funders and from insurance companies that mean you have to cast your out like as wide as you do now. What is the, one area, well, two areas of concern. One is for paid staff, so that includes people who organise volunteers. They haven't come up with what they will be charged. And I think the charge will go up because it's meant to be self-sufficient. So I think paid staff would likely to be, with that administration cost, close to or over £100. Now, if you're a school, a secondary school that employs 120 people, mm -hmm. if you think of all the staff, £100 does add up. Mm -hmm. But you only have to do it once. And but these people might move around. So A, there is a cost implication for big organisations where it's mainly paid staff. For where there's volunteer staff, um, they say it's free, but they've been at administration. At the moment, 
Princeton long barrel barley charge with VAT. I think it's £8, 10 pence. But because a person may only need it once, I mean, that, that's an investment because that volunteer will have it wherever they volunteer and whatever they do. Sorry. Just at the moment, I understand, uh, people are still, I'm just also looking at the time, people mm -hmm. are still filling in their CRB, their normal yes. CRB yeah. forms. DBS, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. DBS I hear the people. Oh, oh, yes. yes. We had someone fill it out yesterday. But they'll come back. We've been, we've been told we can't use CRB. Yeah. It's, 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 it's up to, if, they, if they arrive up at uh, Liverpool, where, where you know, yeah. because uh, before the 28th of February, they will go through the computer system. Anything that arrives the first of March, the DPS forms are going through now. But from the first of March, if it's got CRB written at the top, basically the computer will throw it out, will recognise it before we, we send our forms to UJIA. Yeah, well, it, but it eventually yeah. goes up to it goes back to their office. So from the first of March, everybody has to. Yeah, I, but because, 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 those, because the new forms are available, I would ask for the new and cost anything to buy the yeah. forms. I would get the new forms now. Yeah. So some years ago it was going to be just one form you'd have to fill yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, this, this is the new guy, the yeah. new guy, though. Uh, a couple of questions. Firstly, the CRB mm. website. Mm. Um, has always had a list on it of umbrella organisations yeah. that will check for free for volunteers. Yeah. Is that still? Yeah, yeah just transfer. It's just a okay, train so to it's the same. Same. So I don't <coughs> want to do barnet out business, but it's possible to go onto that website and get a free get free checks for volunteers. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the. <coughs> I may have another question, I'll come back to you. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I may not have the answer, by the way. Because there's, That's fine. There's, there's a bits that are still fuzzy around the edges, like well, how much will it cost? I don't know yet. I've got two questions on that one. Can I just say, I've been doing them online, yes. as we've been told them to, okay. and they come back really, really quickly, but we don't get a certificate anymore. Mm -hmm. The individual gets a certificate, and I've been told I'm not allowed to yeah. keep it on file. What so, how do I know but, if there's a problem if yeah, I don't get a certificate? In, th in theory, that was always the case. What they used to have, you used to have a part one that would go to the employer, and then the part two would go to the person. Because officially, it's, the, it's not the employee, the individual asking for the CRB, the details, because they, they're the ones who give permission for the police to look up the detail. So the employer would get a paper copy, which they were meant to destroy after six months anyway. Not having any of the ever did, but those were, that those were the rules. Um, <coughs> There's nothing wrong with insisting on a copy of what the person gets, providing it's kept in a uh, locked file, a kept confidential, and if they leave, you should actually destroy it. Your co they tell you a photo copy. The CRB form, the DBS, uh, not form, the certificate belongs to the individual, so that's why you normally get sent to the home address. Yes, they used to confirm it to employers, uh, now they will confirm it to the registered body. So if you do it online, for instance, they would have a they should have a list of confirmation that could be checked. So you can confirm that that person's. Do you ask the person to bring it in? I, I, I always tend to ask. Well, we do. Do you not get? I've been told I'm not allowed to do that. Do you not get a number when you when you when no. you? Do, well, I do mine through uh, through through anymore. a company, and I get an email. What, once you said to that, just just with a confirmation number, with with, with a CRB number on it, and I put that on a on a spreadsheet, and that's so I've got some reference that the CRB has come back. It, 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 really? It is partly okay. because of, it is partly because of the data protection that the person, the individual, the volunteer, is asking for the track on themselves. So they're given permission for what used to be the CRB to check with the police. You know, they're given written permission. The employer wasn't given written permission, so. There are questions where they should have that information. The problem is, if there are things that come back on the form, criminal convictions, so as an employer, you need to know. Uh, but they, I don't know, they, they, they can receive ones back that, that have got convictions on. Well, we yeah. used to get yeah. those, always. Yeah. And, and, and depending on what it was, yeah, yeah. you'd allocate them because of this, what they this, could do. But this, if I don't know, then I'm This was part of the worry that they were thinking that because they were using the forms as a, people employed to use them as a filtering process. So, so to cover the, to cover themselves, if they had a conviction, people used to be refused work, even though the conviction may have nothing to do. A lot of things that come back to me saying that a person uh, travelled on London Underground without a valid ticket. Well, that might make them a better youth work. You know, it, it wasn't. <laughs> 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 
Of the collective thing. Really. Uh, no. So you're not meant to take into account unless it relates to that. Not all employers were. So there was a late protection issue about will you give me information to employers or so, you know, that they didn't need to have from a data care. But you should still be able to confirm A, that a person has got a form, because there is a unique number, and I think they want people to check electronically rather than have paper numbers anyway. And that whether anything is recorded on it, you need to be told if something is recorded because of the duty of care for whoever you're working with. Um, with CRB, I've worked in organisations where CRB have inspected us and found that we have undertaken CRB checks unnecessarily and they've not been happy with that. Has there not been any kind of communication between the DBS insurance and funders to make sure that that doesn't happen? Because the risk of, there is also a risk of undertaking CRBs unnecessarily. Um, and that that risk carries an element of uh, potential closure or negative inspections, yeah. that kind of thing. But you should be able to inspect any group that wanted to be a registered body because yeah. the assumption that they'd have over 100 yeah. a year. Yeah. Um, they all spot you trade claims on that. I, as somebody in, yeah. I must have worked many with children young people. Um, I don't like the idea of the theoretical idea of an unnecessary check. <coughs> because if, if, if at the time as employing volunteers and paid workers, they were working, in my case, with children and young people, I needed to feel some safe. You go over the CRB, didn't make anybody safe, but it was another hurdle. It was another <coughs> barrier, barrier, but it was making it more difficult for people who could, if the opportunity arose, or might for other reasons mean harm to children, young people, bunch of adults. And it's about putting those barriers, you know, having references, having a, a, a police check, making sure people are interviewed, looking at passports or driving licenses, because um, what you've got on paper just proves they've got the paper, it doesn't prove it's the same. No, there's a whole lot of barriers we're trying to put up in order to pro provide some protective fencing around, around people, which is what one of these are. Um, I think what's happening is they're going more electronic and, and they won't be sent, they, they, yeah, they've tried to stop paper copies but for a while actually they were looking at that. But everybody, everyone's got a unique reference number and the idea is that as somebody who say uses volunteers, you will be able to feed that unique reference number in to check it relates to the person that you'll see, so you will be able to update it. But said they said it's a fee payable and I think the fee's got to be with the individual because if I'm putting up a form, I'm saying, and signing, I'm giving, so, I'm signing that they have permission to look at my decal. So there's so work. Okay, account. I have some volunteers whose CRBs come up to three years and a few months time. Mm. Yeah. So can you just tell me what I need to do? Do I need to what? renew them after three years now, or how did it? The, the three years was always a, gu a guidance. It was yeah, never, no. never. No. I, would, I would wait for after February. Yeah. So it's a new DPS. So it's a new yeah. system because once they have those forms then you can electronically test them after three years, you don't need to fill up a form. Yeah. So if you like, this isn't the best time to do the old form. You might, you might as well wait for two weeks, do, do it through the DBS. Therefore, they'll be on a system that can be electronically track up on later. So if you have the same one here three years later, you will not need to fill up a new form, but you might need to have an audit code to prove that you have tracked nothing's happened in those last three years. Right, but in a few months, do I have to fill in a new, uh, do they have to fill in a new form? That, 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 is that, up, that, that is that is that is that is It's only just had a CRB saying in January, you don't have to do a new DBS in February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the CRB was done three years ago. If it was done three years ago and you're working to those guidelines, just when the three years comes up as normal, mm -hmm. that would be the last time you'd have to do those three year tracks. Yeah, so you would, you would then start a new, yeah, a new practice. Yeah. <coughs> and, and those forms are still, no, still valid. Okay. Because they still relate to the Okay, then yeah, well, we need to move on to the interesting answer. Can I give them all your email address, maybe? Yeah, yeah. 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 Question. So I'll take the last question. I still think well, the one that the Jill had an answer about how to get the results, because that's crucial, of course. Yeah, because it's now? healthy that they've been clear. Yeah. It's just what the what I think, What I think the intention is, and it's not that clear, is that as in you will tr you will track up, you'll put the details in, and there'll be a print of, you'll get back a printable form to say that only you have tracked, the date and time of the track, and there's been nothing recorded against that number. 
That is the information you will have. You won't have a full bit of paper that mentions any criminal. So you need to put a number in the Yeah, computer. and there'll be a unique number, which is why you, um, you have to write that, that unique number. We are re referring to the DBS form, which yeah. is why no, it's a new system starting. Yeah? It's the detail. That's what we need to know, whether they've shoplifted or whether they've murdered yeah. someone, whether they've just, you know, no, what, what happened, on the what, what, The way I mean, what happened is come back to say that there is something, or there's a conviction on the fault, and as well as you are the person. <laughs> it must be what it is. Now, how you prove... Make sure you to not slips. Well, yeah. The, when, when somebody applied for a job, if they haven't ticked for the job conviction, you find out they had a job conviction.